is there. They were basically forced to come in and secure their assets. Again, I'm not even defending that, right. but but under common law maxims, the West started the overthrow of the elected government. That's right. They're in there. And now, what do you make of Obama signing an executive order to start grabbing the assets of any Russians they want? Yeah. I mean, this is a big escalation. That, that is a big escalation. And look, it always comes back to money, right? All these steps that we take, which we claim are not an act of war, I agree with you. Whenever you talk about sanctions, when you talk about seizing assets, those are, are overt acts of war. And that's where, again, I I think the American people have to pay attention to what's happening here because we're being drawn into another conflict. China has already said that they side with Russia on this conflict. They already side with, with uh, their right to be there. And again, the other thing you have to remember is that in Crimea, it's not that the Russians are moving into an area where the mass population doesn't want them. The mass population's begging Russia to come in, asking them to come and secure these areas. Most of these people have Russian heritage and speak Russian. So it, it's hardly uh, kind of you know an invasion, I guess, as it's being, being uh, scripted in the Western media. When I look at the London Guardian, they're like, oh, it's some visa restrictions. I've got the executive order. You guys can put that on screen if you want. It's the same thing as that Africa executive order uh, where they can just grab the assets of anybody they claim is aiding radicals. So it's just the absolute power to do whatever they want. Any person or individual or entity uh, who they, the State Department says is involved in a, in, a, in a problem with Ukraine to be responsible for complicit in or engaged in directly or indirectly any of the following actions or policies that undermine democratic processes or institutions in Ukraine. The West just overthrew our elected government. So they should put sanctions on Obama or on uh, Secretary of State Kerry. Actions or policies that threaten the peace, security, stability, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Well, what, what is the West doing? They know Russia will end up taking part of it. Mm -hmm. Misappropriation of state assets of Ukraine or economically significant entity in Ukraine. And then it just goes into the authority to grab the assets. This is a big deal. Well, and as you said, this is a democratically elected government that was overthrown in Ukraine. So it wasn't as if this happened through a peaceful process. If you're going to side with someone, technically, shouldn't our government side with the democratically elected government of Ukraine and say this was a coup? But but they don't do that, right? And, and so what we're seeing, again, the other thing too, come on. John Kerry, Secretary of State Kerry, getting up and talking about how we can't be meddling in other countries' affairs. You can't allow some country to come up with some loose reason just to enter the country. And it's the same thing that he was doing with Syria. The same. It's like he's trying to make hypocritical, satirical jokes. It is. It is. It's. It's almost comical if it weren't so sad that when he's making these statements, because it's the exact same thing the U.S. is doing, claiming they needed to be in Syria. What we did when we went into Iraq to chase down invisible weapons of mass destruction. When the West does it, it's considered spreading democracy. And I guess when Russia does it, it's considered an invasion. Where do you see all this going? You're a smart guy. What's your gut tell you? I mean, are things getting better or worse? I know people are waking up, but at the same time, the establishment has the power and just doesn't seem to care. Well, I think part of the problem in this particular situation, unlike in the Middle Eastern conflicts, I think when, when people look at Russia as, as a whole in America, um, there is almost this intrinsic, almost DNA response that Russia is bad and the USA is good, right? It's Rocky IV all over again. We keep falling back into that mindset. And so I think media is playing that game, really playing that game right now. That is, if it's Russia, it must be bad. If it's the USA, it must be good because these are the Cold War sides. I mean, this is what we were- But really, it's globalist above both our countries- <laughs> Exactly. Playing us off against each other. That's exactly what it is. And in the end, globalists win because that's their goal is to play these, these sides against each other and ultimate, ultimately, through, there you go. They, they're quick about that, Rocky. Fire. I will break you. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what ultimately what it comes down to is it's about controlling the money, about controlling the populations. That's what the globalists are interested in. Well, that's right. I just know this. Vladimir Putin pays people to get married and have children. And the CPS tries to not take people's kids in Russia. And they don't have forced inoculations there. And their media more and more sounds like my show. Mm. And then meanwhile, because they've been under such tyranny, they're kind of going the other direction in some ways. They're going into tyranny and some others because of outside pressure. I look at us, the people that run us, absolutely act like textbook authoritarians. Mm. Yeah, well, they are, they are authoritarians, they, and they believe that. Look, if you look at everything that the NSA has done, if you look at the Obama administration wanting to put an FCC monitor in the newsrooms around the country to make sure that they know the news process by which news is- You know, happening. that's my line in the sand. I'm not having some federal- uh, Minion, or to quote Tony Montana, Chavano in every corner telling me what to eat, what to sleep, what to wear. Yeah. You know about a sheep, bad, bad. I mean, th this has got to end.
Yeah, it was. It's ridiculous. I mean, it flies in the face of, of every fundamental basic right that we have. And certainly in, in the media or in the press, the freedom of press is about having the right to be able to dissent. And that's what they want to remove is the right to dissent. Ben Swan, that's my next question. You've come from the mainstream media into the new media that's becoming dominant. I want to talk about the media wars and where you expect things to go. Because when I think when the when the history books or the digital you know histories are written, it's going to be things like Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com. It's going to be things like uh, House of Cards and, and people like Ben Swan, who are going to be known as signposts on the death of the old state-run media. I want to talk about that straight ahead. Stay with us. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Question, could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com. Spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. You've been hearing about the amazing benefits of heart and body extract for many years. Now, hear from the co-founder. My name is Tony Knudsen, and I am the co-founder of Heart and Body Extract. We've been in business for over 13 years now. With thousands of satisfied customers who have experienced the amazing benefits but never experienced a price hike. We've kept consistent pricing the whole entire time. The company's been in business and will continue to do so. Call today for Heart and Body Extract, 866-295-5305, or visit hbextract.com. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show Because there's a war on for your mind The 
establishment has controlled the debate and, and really the maps of the mind for a long time where state-run, establishment, corporate-run, big media is called mainstream media. And then we're the alternative media, but now on every metric, they are collapsing in free fall. Alternative media is proliferating in the quality and the selection, but also in the viewership, the listenership, the readership. Uh, but it's also moving towards a singularity where only the best new media is becoming dominant. Now that there's a kind of a saturation of alternative media or new media, it's creating competition there as well. It was easy to come to this game, you know, 20 years ago and be alternative media, then to become the new dominant media. But there's also going to be a singularity, not just for dinosaur state-run media, but for all other media as well, where everyone basically becomes a reporter. And people learn to just use, you know, individuals and outlets as another perspective uh, or like a port into reality. Ben Swan, if they can shoot for almost nothing, a, a show like... Game of Thrones that's seen hundreds of millions of times and destroys the Hollywood model. Uh, if Variety's reporting that Hollywood is uh, literally in a mass exodus out of California, mm -hmm. uh, if people run from socialism, run from collectivism in a slave revolt, if they run from mainstream media, what ends up happening? What do you see at the end of this process? Well, I think what you're describing is very accurate, right? We, you, I think there is a kind of an emergence of new media, and I don't, I don't use the term alternative very often, because you're new media, right? You are the new way of people getting information, understanding what's going on around them. And I love what you said. It really is a process of people saying, here are perspectives, and then I'm drawing my own opinions, which is what you're encouraging them to do, right? Be critical thinkers. And mainstream media doesn't encourage you to be a critical thinker. They're the experts. They're the authority. They're going to tell you what to think, and there is nothing else to consider. And there, there's no other viewpoint, no other idea. And so I think what we're going to see is exactly what you said, more and more new media popping up. And then as that media pops up, it's presenting perspectives and, and ideas and points of view. And people say that's interesting and they're adding it kind of to their collective thought. That sounds like a renaissance to me. That yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is, right? I, I think the internet has become what, what the printing press was, Gutenberg's printing press. It, it's this ability for people to say, I no longer need to be read to. Right, I have the ability to read for myself. I have the ability to gather information for myself. That's what's happening with the internet. But see, for too long, the internet was simply just a place where you could find information. Now you've got the, the, the folks who are curating that information, folks like yourself, who say, okay, now let's help you find information and, and get it to you. And that's where media is most successful. And I just say, hey, I think it's interesting that they just put sanctions on the Russian government. Right. And they're going to be grabbing their bank accounts. I think it's interesting the Bitcoin CEO died. We can cover so much more because it's not just the formulaic. Uh, here's the sports. Here's the weather. Here's a shooting. You know, here's a car wreck. Uh, this person came to town and here's a Prozac ad. That's right. That's right. And I got to tell you, too, and this is a, it's a little bit, you know, I guess to the side. But just what we just talked about right now when your guys popped up that Rocky Four video. Um, it's funny to me because I, I spent 15 years in broadcast journalism, Alex. 15 years working for TV stations. I have never ever called from an anchor desk for a piece of video and have been able to have someone pop it up. I mean, that's that's how fast the pace is in this place. So what you guys- Well, watch this. I'm going to tell them to move the camera more that way because there's too much room on this <laughs> side. To one side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, we don't want you right in the middle, but we want you <laughs> exactly right like that. No, no, but that's the thing. People can see all the sausage being made right, right here. That's right. I don't try to form all my words perfectly. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's just stream of consciousness. And, and it's authenticity, right? That's, that's what this experience has to be. It has to be an authentic experience. It's not this polished, hey, we've got to make everything look a certain way, sound a certain way. Way, um, so that we're very careful in how everything comes out because it's all about, on that end, the mainstream message is about controlling the message. You're not trying to control the message. You're simply putting the message out there. And You're right, and they sell it like, oh, because we want it to look really good and have high standards. The truth is they want everybody under control, and then the CBS Broadcast Center sends the, the, the teleprompter text down. They give you a video package sent from Manhattan. You read over it locally, and people think it's the local anchor they trust. Mm -hmm. Really, it's a technocrat writing it in Manhattan. Yeah, or, or some, uh, some individual business that does nothing but write consumer stories for you, and they send them out to 15 stations, and everybody takes them. Hey, Hey, Mercury's good for your baby. <laughs> and revoices them. And that's the key, right? It's the anchor's voice, so it has the legitimacy, but it's the same script going out to every place. It makes them repeaters. It, they are repeaters. But now what you've done successfully launching your own media platform and others are doing, I mean, this is the death knell. I don't think they can come out with taxes, 
regulations, net IDs, end of net neutrality. I don't think they can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Yeah, it's, I think the challenge for them is going to be to stay relevant because even if new media didn't exist, I mean, they're still irrelevant. Right, if you got rid of all the new media in in one fell swoop, that doesn't suddenly make you more legitimate. And so, folks still won't watch Piers Morgan. That doesn't make them any less dead.